What's up? It's time for another rendition of Ebor's Guitar Universe. And today, since last week, we're focused on picking and what have you. So we did that tremolo picking exercise. Today, we're going to focus on legato technique. That means hammer-ons and pull-offs. And these are all for things that you want to do to, to, to express yourself. So these, when you use legato technique, you want the instrument to sound more, uh, more like like a like a saxophone or or a wind instrument it has that kind of sound opposed to a percussive sound like picking when you when you pick a lot of notes so it'll sound more more smooth more more horn like um and i got a little exercise i'm going to do this guitar is tuned in standard tuning it usually uh, like the two tunings i use are either a half step down or or standard tuning. This guitar happens to be in standard tuning. And I'll just give you a quick A note so you can tune up if you like. So. So that way you know you're you're in tune. Either way, you know, you'll be able to figure this exercise out. Um, this is in uh, uh, A harmonic minor or A minor. You know, I, you can up throw the harmonic minor in. It stems from like an old lick, like an old Metallica lick from back in the day. Um, it's kind of similar to that, only I think uh, I think they use tapping. But we're going to do this uh, so it works out the inside and the outside of your left hand. So it's really good to work out the, the, the outer pinky muscles and, and the ridge of the of the right hand and the index finger and behind the thumb to strengthen those muscles up and so you can gain like uh, uh, clarity, speed, and accuracy. And, and I'll give you a little idea of it. And I'll, I'll even throw in something that, that's a little over the top for you that you can just add on and expand this exercise with because it's a little musical. So, uh, you know, uh, and I'm sure most people that heard Metallica or something, they'll kind of recognize it. It's a little bit different. It's more like an exercise I, I come up with uh, to expand on that idea and just give my left hand a workout. And it goes like uh, it goes like this. And I'll do it, uh, you know, why not? We'll just uh, full throttle it, and then, then I'll throttle it back so you can see what it is. Uh, so... Uh, if you want but very much I just ascend upwards and, and, and I start off with the harmonic minor G sharp so I'll start at the the fourth fret and I, I, I literally hammer on from nowhere if you notice I didn't pick one note so uh, you know you hammer on in the fourth fret hammer on in the seventh fret and pull that off and you pull that off like uh, you can do it four times, you can do it six times. This exercise is open for you to play around with, but uh, make, I would make sure it's either even or at least it sounds cool in some kind of sequence or grouping. I'll do it just so we're doing each pattern, each part of this scale uh, up to uh, uh, one fret at a time, moving up the scale four times each. change these patterns up if you want and be creative as you can with them. I mean, it's no set way to do this as an exercise. I play around with all, all the patterns through A minor or A harmonic minor. 
Um, and the biggest thing is that you're just you're staying in the key. You got a you got a distinct pattern, and you're getting accurate hammer ons. That's the hardest part is to hammer on from nowhere, and to keep it clear. Like when I'm doing this with my right hand, I'm actually moving and keeping my my palm over these first three strings if I'm playing the, on the higher three strings. So that way it keeps it quiet, otherwise it's going to ring out. And I'll give you an example. You can hear all that excess stuff, so that keeps it really quiet. And I actually changed the pattern there, but, but it's the same, it's the same scale. I just kind of moved up an extra fret. So if we want to think about that, we're hammer on fifth, or, I'm sorry, fourth fret, hammer on seventh, pull off, pull off the open string. And you do that, repeat that three more times or as many times as you like, and then move up to the fifth fret, fifth fret hammer on, hammer on to the eighth fret, pull off, pull off the Seventh fret, tenth fret, pull off, pull off. You can do that as many times as you like. Hammer on eight, hammer on twelve, pull off, pull off. And then tenth fret, hammer on, hammer on thirteen, pull off, pull off. You can keep going up that scale if you like. And you can even do them all at once if you wanted to. Or on a different string. And so forth. Um, and and the, the gist of it is, is that you're getting the exercise, you're getting accuracy, so play it very slow and get that exercise. Play it moderately. And then even if you're playing it sloppy, try to do it as fast as you possibly can once you get used to it. And then if you're sloppy, slow it down a tad and see how fast you can do it accurately. And then slow it down again. Fast, slow, fast, slow. It's like versus speed. Um, and, and then slow it down. So that way, that way you can get the accuracy at a slow speed so you know that you can start speeding up. You speed it up a whole bunch and then you, you start getting a feel for going fast and slow it down again. You know, fast, slow, fast, slow. Metronomes are nice if you like to use those. I, I do. Um, sometimes I don't use them with it at all, um, but they really help your timing um, and accuracy in time because music's just pitches in time, you know, sound notes, notes, pitches in time, you know. So rhythms in solos, rhythms in riffs, uh, you know, rhythm's a big deal and phrasing's a big deal, but. Um, I'll play this uh, fast one more time, and then I'll throw in something over the top for you with the same exercise that totally makes it sound different, and it all has to deal with hammer ones and pull offs too. So one more time, fast. I'll, I'll do it on the G string this time. Um, So, and I changed it around, as you can see, that time too a little bit. Even though it was the same patterns I went through, I didn't go completely ascending up in them patterns. So you can mix them around so it sounds kind of cool. And then for something over the top, let's add in the right hand, right? So if we're playing up here with these, maybe, maybe we can hammer on with this finger, which is tapping, right, at the, at the 12th fret E. And, and just do that same pattern there, right? So you're doing that, right? But now you throw this in after that. And I'm just gonna send up the scale like that. Here, the only up in on the tappy hand, I'm not gonna go to harmonic minor. I'm gonna hit the G natural because that'll sound good when I move up to the third position of that whole big pattern that I've showed you for the finger exercise. So I'm just going to keep ascending here, up in the scale, so 12th fret tap, but with the 4th fret pattern, 13th fret tap, but with the 5th fret pattern, 7th fret pattern with, with the 15th with the, with the fret tap, and then 8th fret pattern with 
the A note, which is 17 fret tap, and then down to the B note. So I'm just doing the same pattern, but I'll, I'll just ascend it up with my tapping hand. So slowly. with it as well um, and, th and that sounds really crazy because you're doing a, a rhythm grouping that's called sextuplets and it sounds like you're doing so much and it's a little difficult at first but but uh, you know after you do it you'll be able to really uh, it, it really sounds like something and you can expand on that ideas on these ideas for yourself so it sound like this so, so totally crazy <laughs> That sounds kind of neat, huh? All right. Well, for this week, those are some cool ideas for you and some legato exercises so you can sound extra smooth and throw some killer tones out there, or you can sound really cool over, like, some old-school metal songs. All right. Have a good day, guys. Later on.